Welcome back. So the next step we want to do before we start creating our toolpath is to come over here under the properties and we want to set up our tool settings and the stock setup. So those are very important setting settings that we need to make sure they're set up correctly before we can start setting up our toolpath. Okay, so go ahead and expand the properties under the lathe default and you're going to see that the files, tool settings and stock setup. Now, if you click on any one of these, the dialog box will appear for the machine group properties and you can actually access any of them from here. So you don't have to close out of this and go back to each of these. All the tabs are there for each of the three uh, options that you have under the properties. Now for the files, we already know that we set it up correctly. Okay. Now again, if you have your own machine, this is where you set up your own machine, but make sure they're all in inches. They all say lathe inches next to them and go to the tool settings. Now program number, this is where we define the program number. For our program, we're going to keep it number one. Feed calculation, we're going to, for all of our exercises, we're going to keep it from the tool. Now, we are not going to sit and choose different kinds of material, feeds, or speed for any of our exercises. This is not a CNC course, this is a Mastercam for SolidWorks course. I will be creating a CNC course and look for that in the future, especially for mill and especially for lathe. Okay, but for this one, it's going to be specifically just for Mastercam. Uh, we don't know what material you're using. We definitely don't know what tools you're using. So we can't really advise on that. Otherwise, it will be misleading. If we do teach you certain materials, feeds and speeds for certain mater material, it's going to be different depending on what material and tools that you have. Okay. For the toolpath configuration, now we went a little bit over that in the intro exercise. So we want to make sure that the assigned tool number sequentially warrant for duplicate tool numbers are there. Use tool step pack coolant are selected and search tool library when entering tool number. Now this will make your life a lot easier during the selecting the toolpath and uh, parameters for each toolpath and operation. For the advanced options, you want to make sure overwrite default with moral modal values and this make basically make sure that it copies all of your values from operation to operation to help you save a lot of time okay i like to have all of them selected you definitely don't need all of them selected but at least at least make sure assign tool number sequentially and warn of duplicate tool numbers this way uh, mastercam will assign each number uh, sequentially so tool number one will be 2t1 tool number two, two will be t2 and not off so it won't be T1, T5, for example. And if you do use the same tool number, it will let you know that you're using uh, two tools or you're adding two tools to your operation that are the same. Okay. For the sequence number, this is just for your NC code. I like to start with one and make sure increments by 10. So it'll be 1, 10, uh, 20, and for example, uh, and they're on in there four. So one will be your first all the way up to uh, whatever number it is, incrementing each by 10. Material is again where you select your material. We will not be going over that, but if you want to select material, you can go to lathe edit or mill edit and you can select your material. There's a lathe material definition and uh, this is we're not going to be going over this because we will not be using this in this, in this entire tutorial, but this is where you can come in and change uh, depending on what you want to use uh, and define your material depending on what you want to use. Okay. Different people like to machine different material differently and this is going to be varying uh, from user to user. Okay. Uh, last but not least, let's go to stock setup. The first thing we want to do is change the stock plane. Default is Mastercam top. But remember, we've created one that is lathe plane. So you want to com come over, make sure that you select lathe plane and select OK. Stock setup. For this one, I'm going to leave both of these empty. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to leave the chuck jaw empty because I use my own chuck jaw. But for the next exercise, exercise number two, I'm going to show you how to set up your own chuck jaw in here. OK, but for this one, because I use my own, what I'm going to do is go to the left side spindle. And because this is a part that's being held on the left side. OK, so this is why there's two. There's a right side and left side. As you can see, it says not defined for both of them. So after defining my left side, it's going to actually say defined over here. Property delete is what you want to do is if you if you set up one of them and you just want to delete it You would just hit the delete button. Okay, and right now nothing will happen because you haven't set anything up yet So let's go ahead and go to properties So this is machine component manager You can change the name of it. I'm gonna keep it as stock for the geometry You want to keep it as cylinder because we are using cylinder. Okay, but you have the options to make it no geometry solid entity block which is more for mill and cylinder so for our DVD, we're going to use some of the solid entities and this one for this one, we're going to use the cylinder. All right. So come over here. 
So there's an OD selection as well as the length. Now I've created this already, so that's why it already knows what OD and length I've selected, but I'm gonna go ahead and select that. So for the OD, come over here and select, hit on select, and it will ask you, always read the yellow message. It'll say select a point, sketch, circular edge, or circular face. So this is gonna be the biggest OD of the part. Okay, we're gonna start with a stock that's gonna be as big as this uh, OD. So just go ahead and select that face, and select OK, and it'll automatically select the OD as 3.5. Now remember, if I open up my drawing again, it's going to show right here that the OD is 3.5. So this is how we make sure that our OD is correct, OK? So the second thing is we want to make sure that the length is selected. So go ahead and select the length, and this will actually ask you to select two points. So first is going to be the edge on this side, and the second point is going to be the edge circle on the right side. And if you select OK, it will automatically calculate it and will select Z, it will select the length being 6 inches. We don't have an ID. Now, this there is an ID here, but this is drill, not really drilled all the way uh, through, so we don't have to select an ID. So we can keep this unchecked, OK? And position along axis. This is the Z axis and where you want to position it, OK? Now, it'll automatically right now go around your entire part. And that's very important to know. You want to make sure that this little preview, this little line is around your entire part and not anywhere else. Now, sometimes it'll show up and down, and I'm going to show you a little something over here for that. Now, as you can see for the axis Z, if you actually switch it to the plus Z, uh, it will take your entire part and it will switch it to the opposite side. Now, it will not preview until you hit the preview button, and you will not see it right now until you hit, okay, so you, okay, so... Basically, what you can do with a plus Z and minus Z is you will actually take your stock and switch it from either this side or that side. For us, we're going to keep it in the negative Z. Now, the reason for that is because we are going in the negative direction. As you can see, Z right here is in the positive direction and D up is in the positive direction. So we're actually going to be machining the entire time in the negative direction in Z axis and in the negative direction in D because as you can see, the positive is basically opposite of where we're machining. So you want to make sure you remember that, okay? Now, next thing we want to do is let's say we want to add some, um, some material to the end of the part because we also want to face this part. And the way you can do this is go ahead and click on Use ma ma Margins. If you want to add some stock to the top of the part, this is where you can add it, OD Margin, and you can add it to the left margin as well. If you have some, uh, some stock on the left side that you're going to be flipping your part and machining it later, you can do that as well. But for us, we're just going to be adding some to the right margin. And we're going to add 0.1. So we're going to add 100 thou to the right side over here. Okay? And let's go ahead, after you get everything done over here, select OK. All right? Now what's going to do is going to add component as child or add component as sibling. You want to make sure that add component as child is selected and go ahead and click on OK. Uh, now one very nice feature I like to use is called shade boundaries. Shade boundaries, what it does is actually, I'm going to uh, place this in the right side view. It will actually shade the, the side that it's actually machining. Okay. And what happened is that when you start creating your toolpath, it will take out that shaded side. Now, I like to use it. Do you need to use it? No, you don't. I like to use it because it shows me what, I'm, what my toolpath is machining. So if I miss a certain area, I'm easily allowed, I'm easily able to see it. Okay? So after you define that, this is where you can define your chug jaw. I'm just going to select properties over here to show you how it looks like. You can define a few types of chug jaws. But in our next exercise, I will show you how to do this. Uh, in more detail, okay? Go ahead and select OK. OK is at the bottom. It's a little bit bigger than my screen. So I'm going to click on OK to accept and exit out of that. And this is where you can select uh, your if whatever you want to display. For example, because we defined a chug jaw right now, because we opened the properties, it automatically defines a chug jaw. Now, I, automa I accidentally defined the right side spindle over here. I want to make sure to select the right side spindle and hit delete. And it will automatically not define anything on the right side over here, okay? But I want to make sure I have the left side selected. And I also want to make sure that the chug jaw is deleted as well because I did not define it. When you open properties for anything, it will automatically define it for you. So you want to make sure when you click something, uh, the only thing that you want is defined. The rest is not defined, okay? Display options, you can, you can select both left and right stock, but we're not using the right stock, so you don't have to select that. After you're done with all that, uh, well, one more thing is tailstock center, 
and steady reset. Now those again, we will be going over them in more detail when we use them later on in different exercises. And the steady reset, I'll show you exactly what that is. And the nice thing about MasterCam for SolidWorks is there's a lot of graphical previews that will show you in detail, um, you know, what to do and help you select the right uh, parameters to uh, program it correctly. Again, these options right here, we will leave them, leave them for later on exercises. Go ahead and select OK to accept that. And what I'm going to do, as you can see, because I've selected some of these, it created the tail stock for me. I'm going to go back to my stock setup and I'm going to make sure I delete my tail stock center to make sure that it's deleted from here and select OK. What I'm going to do is put it into the front view so I can show you how that looks like. OK, so the preview, the solid preview shows that it's just a sheet of paper that when you start uh, creating your toolpath, it will actually be taken out of that little sheet and it will help you see what you're machining a little bit better. So if you've created something wrong, it will help you identify that much, much better. Now, one thing I noticed uh, that if I go to my front view, I noticed that I still haven't really added any margin to the right side. As you can see, uh, I need to add some margin because I really want to face this part in uh, front. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back to my stock setup and all you have to do is click on one of them for the properties to open up and then go back to my left side spindle properties and then under margin. I did use margins, but I must have deleted it. So go back to the right side and hit backspace and then type in 0.1. As you do that and click anywhere, you're going to see your stock update. And that's what you want to make sure uh, is that your stock is now updated and it uh, brings that little sheet uh, forward a little bit. OK, so go ahead and select OK and select OK to accept that. And then I'm going to place this back to my front view. And as you can see, now there's a little bit of more stock added to the material. So this is your stock sheet setup. This is just a little sheet that shows that this is where your stock is. And as you start creating your toolpath, you're going to be machining from that sheet and it'll help you identify that you are definitely uh, creating the right toolpath and it's machining everywhere that you need to machine. OK, so the last thing basically you verify when you're done is that this entire sheet of stock is not there. OK, so this concludes the session and in the next session we are ready to start creating the toolpath operations for exercise number one.